Well, everyone, today's the day. I've seen a lot of people talk about this stock, so I figured I really need to talk about it as well. And the stock we're going to be taking a look at today is Mio. Wait, did you say it was Neo with an N as in Nancy, not M as in Mike? Oh, okay then. So I got that wrong. We're doing a little change of plans here today, and we're going to talk about Neo, the car company. <laughs> Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today. My name is Matt, and before we get started here, just need to say, not advice, please don't take this as advice. If you do need advice, please go speak to an advisor, just for your entertainment purposes only. And also, if you like this video, like, subscribe, I don't really care, that's a lie. I do care, but I'm not here to tell you what to do. So if you wanna like and subscribe, that's totally up to you, but I'm not gonna tell you, you have to. Now, I can't really imagine that many people out there, especially if you're a stock investor, haven't heard of NEO already. But in case you haven't, as I mentioned in the intro, they are a Chinese electric vehicle maker. Their stock has been on an absolute tear so far this year, and it's been receiving a lot of attention. Now, what I wanted to do today was talk about this stock and see if it's something that I do feel is worth adding to my portfolio. So what I wanted to do though is talk about why I'm late to the party, why I think now could be a good buying opportunity for this stock, what I like about this company, and then I'll share with you my thoughts on if I think this is actually going to be a Tesla killer, as many people have been calling it so far. So let's start off by talking about why I'm a little late to the Neo party here. And this is a stock I know. People have been talking about this for months now. I've been seeing people talk about this stock since around like May or March of this year. So for a very long time, and here we are in November, and I'm finally deciding to talk about it. But one of the biggest reasons is because I'm not really a huge fan of investing in automobiles to begin with. Because if you take a look at some of the big companies like Ford or Chrysler or GM, uh, even Honda, None of them have really performed that well, if you exclude their dividends. They've all been pretty stagnant. You might have made a little bit of money or you lost money, but overall you would have gotten better returns from just buying an S&P 500 index fund. So they haven't been the most attractive investment to me. That said, once Tesla rolled around, I think they started to change my perception on that because Tesla really was the first to blend this like tech aspect with the automobile and their valuation certainly shows that. So as I develop as an investor, you start to appreciate new industries and changes that are going on. And to me, I almost separate your traditional vehicles or your traditional automobiles from the electric vehicles. And I think the EV space is something that is very interesting to me. So I've done, been doing a little bit more research on the EV space as you know, I did my stock analysis for ChargePoint, which really hasn't done that well for us, but I also have been looking at the car makers themselves, and the more I look into it, the more attractive Neo seems to me. But why now is kind of the big question of why am I so late to getting into this, but what all of a sudden just caught my interest? And as many of you know, I look for companies that are healthy balance sheets, well-established, good management, all of that. And for the most part, Neo doesn't really hit any of those boxes, except for their CEO. I'm a huge fan of their CEO. So I just had a hard time understanding why so many people were rushing to this stock other than hype. But after seeing more and more investors running to it, it reminded me of a quote from Jim Rohn. As also many of you know, I'm a huge Jim Rohn fan. Jim Rohn says, there are some things that you don't have to know how it works, only that it works. While some people are studying the roots, others are picking the fruit. It just depends on which end of this you want to get in on. And I think that applies to me very well when it comes to companies like Neo, because I don't fully understand why this company has a, I think like a $60 billion valuation, but they're not profitable. But at the same time, every investor is running to this stock. So I'm not one to say that everyone out there is wrong and I'm right. So rather than being stuck on the roots, I'd rather bear the fruits with all of you and see if I can make some money with this stock as well. So that's kind of really the biggest reason why this stock is now kind of catching my attention. Also, they're reporting earnings this upcoming week and or well next week, and they've been able to beat their expectations or what analysts have been estimating for their earnings the past two quarters so i am hopeful that they'll be able to continue this trend and i think getting into this position before the earnings report can really help when it comes to a growth side so what do i like this company because clearly their balance sheet is not going to get me excited about this stock ultimately i am buying more into william lee and his vision the ceo 
more than I am the company itself. And that's actually a strategy I've done in the past. It's something that I did with Peloton as well. I'm a big fan of founder-led companies, and William Lee has very humble upbringings. Uh, he has a very strong track record of running successful companies. And I think a lot of his past experiences will carry over to Neo as well. I'm also a big fan that he seems to have a huge emphasis on the customer experience. That's something I always feel is very crucial, especially for younger companies, because that is the best way to build brand loyalty is by making sure everybody that has any type of association with your company has really enjoyed their experiences with you. So I love that aspect and I love that they even have those car updates where if you have an issue with your car, it sends like a message out through like the cloud or something and a mechanic can see what's wrong with your car. They can go to wherever you are, whether you're at work or home and fix it for you, have all the tools needed. So it can be a really seamless experience for you to get a car fix. You're not looking for rides, tow trucks, anything like that. And I think that is gonna be a huge advantage for this company. And I'm also a huge fan of the way William Lee decided to roll out these cars because it's the exact same way that Elon Musk did with Tesla. If you're not familiar, we all know Tesla started off with the Tesla Roadster, which was gonna be a very high-end expensive car and not many people would purchase it. That allows for them to really focus on quality control and make sure there's no delays with people getting things fixed, what kind of issues might come up. And again, it all comes back to that customer experience. Once I got those kinks worked out, they moved to a still expensive car, but more people had access to it and then just built from there until Tesla got to the Model 3, which is their affordable car. This is the exact same approach that Neo is taking. And again, I think especially in a space like automobiles where there are a lot of issues that we see, it's important to have that quality control and risk management right from the start so you can address any issues and make sure that as you're rolling out these cars, you don't have that bad reputation of, oh, this car is a lemon, you do not want it at all. So I love that approach for rolling out products. And honestly, I think it's something that more companies should do even outside of the automobile industry. But ultimately, the thing that I really like the most about this company is their battery swap program. So that to me was got really started getting the wheels turning for me and thinking this is something maybe I should have in my portfolio because I don't own a Tesla. I drive a Civic, so I don't really have experience with charging cars. But from what I've heard, it can be a bit of a nuisance when you're trying to get somewhere, if you're driving on long trips, and you have to stop every so often for 15, 30 minutes, even 45 minutes to charge your car. And in a day where internet has really made everything need to happen instantly, people don't really have 15, 30 minutes to wait while their car charges. I know you can leave it charging overnight, but in a pinch, that is a very long time. So this battery swap program that Neo has where it takes three minutes for them basically just to change out the battery with a fully charged one is absolutely going to give them a competitive advantage in a market where having some form of an advantage is going to be crucial towards your success. And three minutes is a lot better than 15 minutes if you're between appointments, need to get somewhere, what have you. So I think that is absolutely going to be one of their biggest, again, advantages towards them being a successful company and standing out from the competition. Now, of course, I do have questions about this because, you know, what if you got a battery that was like an old battery that doesn't have a charge on it or doesn't hold a charge as well as like a brand new battery does? But if that's something that I think of, I'm sure that's something that Neo has thought about as well and are addressing. So if you know the answer to that, please leave that in the comments below. Now comes the big question though. Do I think this is actually going to be a Tesla killer and really hurt Tesla? And my answer is no, I don't think it will be. Reason being, first thing, most importantly, is the electric vehicle space clearly has room for more than one player. And I think competition is going to be a good thing because it makes pricing less elastic for the companies that have control of the EV market. And it can really help out the consumers when there is a few players in this field, again, just to help with things like pricing. Also, I really do think that traditional automakers have really slept on what Tesla has been doing with their cars. For a long time, I think what Elon Musk and Tesla have done has been completely disregarded by companies like Ford and GM. And I think now they're starting to see that they should have been a little bit more aware of what Elon was doing. And as we see, they're all kind of scrambling now to come out with their own electric vehicles. As I mentioned in previous videos, you know, Hummer now has a electric vehicle. There's now an electric Mustang. So obviously people are starting to pick up on this. But where this could be an advantage for Neo is I think the fact that these traditional automakers have really slept on electric vehicles, it gives new startup automakers 
a better way to go head to head with these more traditional established companies because they're all now trying to figure it out together. You know, had Ford been in this market now for five plus years, I would say Ford has a better advantage than Neo. But again, they're really rolling these all out around the same time, making it a very level playing field. Really, the only one to catch up to is Tesla. So I don't think this is going to kill Tesla. I think this is going to give a very friendly competition when it comes to Tesla. And I'm very excited to start seeing these cars start rolling out and what else we can expect from it. I know that there's the two other electric vehicles being made in China. Those both seem fairly promising as well. But Neo is really one that stands out to me the most. And again, it has to do with William Lee. I love his vision. I love his upbringings. He's a very intelligent person. And at the end of the day, I'm comfortable putting my money towards him. Maybe not as much as the company itself, just given my experience with investing in autos. But... I feel comfortable throwing my money towards this company and seeing what he can do with it. Full disclosure, I did buy just a very small portion of this because I did want some exposure in it before the earnings report came out. And I think from there, this could be a position that I'll hold on to because if you look at analyst estimates, they're, they're all over the place. So they're as low as $40, which isn't much lower than what they're trading at now, but they're upwards of like $375 to $400 a share. Now, that's probably wishful thinking, and I think it'll take a few years to get to that point. But as a long-term investor, that fits right into my style of investing. That gives me time to have my small exposure now. But as more and more information comes out about this, I get to really look at what, how this company is performing. And I'll be looking at key measurements like are their sales going up? Are they getting to be more cost effective when it comes to producing these goods? How many are they selling? Has the competition taken any, way, any market share away from them? And having this little bit of exposure right now just gives me better sleep at night, knowing that I'm not going to go through FOMO or fear of missing out. So this is one I'm very excited about. And, you know, if you came here for the numbers, I'm sorry, I don't really have any. If you're wondering, I do know that uh, NEO has more short term assets than they do both long term and short term liabilities. So financially, I think they're in a good place, which is very reassuring for me. But that's about all I have for the numbers because, I mean, their valuation is atrocious. They're incredibly overvalued if you look at it from that standpoint. But that kind of all circles back to, you know, do you really want to be studying the roots or picking the fruits? And I made the switch from studying the roots to picking the fruits for this company. Won't do that with every company, but I'm also, as I mentioned earlier, not one to say that everyone else out there is wrong and I'm right. So might as well join the party. If you can't beat them, join them. And so far, the stock has already made me money and I literally bought into it yesterday. So one i'm excited for and i would love to know your thoughts on this as well you know if you have any other better financial data out there any numbers that maybe i could pass along let me know because this is probably going to be a video that i'll have a follow-up to it as we start learning more and more information about this but with all that said i hope you enjoyed this video hope that you consider hitting the like button smashing it if that's what you're into and if you haven't already i just ask you consider subscribing again totally up to you. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. You could be anywhere in the world and you're right here with me and I really appreciate that. But I'll let you go ahead, enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you have a great weekend as well.